The more that you give, I think the more that you get back. I doubt myself every day. <laughs> Me too. Every Welcome single day that. I wake up full of doubts. Yeah. I suppose for me, I'm never happy being static. Mm. And I'm very, very hard on myself. I'm like, you know, I haven't done this yet and I haven't done that. Sometimes I'm like, just be really grateful for what you have done. Right. The universe has your back, actually. That if you are conspiring to do good, you know, everything else is going to work with you for it to happen. And people will somehow kind of come out of the woodwork to make it happen. What have you built and what inspired you to build it? I have built a women's fashion business. Um, I'm a fashion designer, so it's a women's ready-to-wear label. And it's for the woman that's constantly on the go. So the uh, clothing is designed to take you from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and beyond sometimes. <laughs> and the idea behind it is that uh, it's all about versatile dressing and really minimalizing what's in your wardrobe. The inspiration behind having my own label kind of came from this impetus that I always had that I needed to create my own vision and execute that in my own way. Um, I often uh, wonder why I needed to torture myself in that way. Um, I could have just worked for somebody else, <laughs> designed for another label. But actually, I did design for another label to begin with, and um, it really stemmed from a sense of feeling as though what I was looking for and what I wanted to create and wear myself wasn't available in the marketplace. Were you a born leader, or did you have to learn to become one? I definitely think, if you ask my mum and my dad, they would say that I was a born leader because I was very bossy at home. <laughs> um, but I think that in actuality, I started my business when I was quite young. I was about 24 years old or so, um, 23, 24. And it was started off the cuff. It was, um, some people have heard this story, but um, I'll tell it just for the sake of posterity. I had created eight jackets and coats, and um, I had no idea what to do with them. I was working in design and production, a very small um, label in the garment district. And um, I had you know, wanted to make these jackets and coats. I made them. I was wearing one to brunch at Prune on the Lower East Side in New York City. Know and that was, place well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> love it. I uh, still love it. And um, I was sitting with a group of girlfriends, and somebody, a table over me, said, well, I love your jacket, you know, who makes it? And I was like, oh, actually, I did. They were like, well, that's amazing. Here's a business card. I'm a buyer from Intermix. Will mm. you, you know, can you come in next week? And I left lunch, emailed her, had an appointment with her next week, took the samples, and left that meeting with a purchase order for about $150,000 for six of the eight styles. So, I mean, that's really kind of unheard of. I mean, it was just such a start. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so exciting. Meanwhile, terrifying, you know, <laughs> right. how am I supposed to do all this? And she was like, can you have it ready in, you know, like, 10 weeks? I'm like, of, of course. course. Yeah. Not even factoring into the amount of time that I had to, like, buy the fabrics from France and all that kind of stuff you know, fund it all. Um, so we've talked about this before. You are very honest about having, seeing the relationship between your personal life and your professional life. Talk a little bit about those personal and kind of professional breakdowns that you've had or a breakdown and, and what you did to break through. So um, basically, as I was deciding to completely change my business strategy, and I actually think that this came from my personal life breaking down. I had been in a relationship and married um, in total. We were together for 13 years, from when I was 17 to 30. And um, we had moved to New York together. He mm. was also English. He is also English. Mm. And you know, we'd, we'd gone through so many things in life together. And um, the whole kind of foundation of my life was crumbling. I'm an only child, um, love my parents, but they live primarily in the UK. So in terms of family, he was my family that I had. Right. I was, you know, I'm a very honest and a very direct person. And, you know, in all honesty, it was, you know, looking like it wasn't going to work out. And I think that I was, as a result, also analyzing, as like if I was gonna be really honest about this part of my life, how could I not throw that lens over the other major part of my life, which was my work. And, you know, from a creative standpoint, I felt burnt out. You know, mm -hmm. we were creating four collections a year. It didn't make any sense. 50% of the collection would, would be picked up by a wholesaler. Um, the other 50% was just like, you know, thrown to the wayside, which I just found so disheartening. Um, and I thought, I don't want to work like that anymore. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to work like that. And, you know, when you are really honest about the relationship that exists between 
those aspects of your life, you know, it's, it's very difficult, I think, for one area to be going really, really well and the other area not to be going so well. You know, there's, a, the, there's an aspect that um, it, it was very difficult to go through it all at once. So 2016, it was a very hard year. Um, but when you come out the other side, you, when you're living with such honesty, it's just, it's a different, you know, I think you achieve things that you never thought that you could really achieve. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the idea of expansion and contraction. Right. Not everything can be in expansion mode and great all of the time. This was definitely contraction mode. Um, but we, we came out the other side as a business and I came out the other side as a person. Mm -hmm as you know a much more grounded and whole individual and i you know really realized that you can have you know your family and your work and you can you can do all of those things but you have to do it with a very solid foundation you don't always have that confidence on your own no. but actually when you gather your friends around you and you know your colleagues i mean some of the people that worked with me were so kind and um, you know, worked extra hours with me or knew what I was going through and, you know, was there for me, were there for me. Um, and I think that, you know, that's, it's, it's incredible who comes out yeah. in your life. When do you doubt yourself most and how do you manage through it? I doubt myself every day. <laughs> me too. Every Welcome single day that. I wake up full of doubts yeah. about everything. Is it worse in the morning or at night? Normally in the morning. Okay. I'm a very impatient person and, you know, if I want something, I've got to have it right now. And that isn't the way that life works. And when you let go of that needing to know the answer in this very second and whether something's going to happen, you are often surprised in the most extraordinary ways by people, by circumstances, by all sorts of things. So I am um, a big proponent of having a practice, whether that's exercise, mm. some, some people it's exercise, you know, a great friend of mine says running is her moving meditation. For me, it's meditation, whatever it is that gets you out of your head and just makes you feel a little bit more embodied and, and again, grounded. And often out of the how you've got the intention, but you're surrendering to how it's all going to manifest. And it can be really difficult. You know, when you have a dream and you're like, how am I going to do it? How am I going to mm. do it? Well, how am I going to do it? and you just keep going on and on, you're a loop. It can be so hard to get out of that and just be like, just have the dream. And, and you can't come. create from that place like, either. You can oh. never create from a place of practicality and technical, Completely. how is this gonna get executed? Yeah, right? you have to have a vision and then people are like, you've got to have the plan. And I'm like, right, because my plans are like all over the place. <laughs> and um, some people are so structured and linear. And that's absolutely not me. You know, right. people are like, so can I see your Excel spreadsheet of your plan? I'm like, well, <laughs> sure, let me get that to you in three weeks. Um, but it's kind of all in here. Right. Or like all in my diary, as I say. Um, but it's really important to not let that how get the better of you. You know, I think you just have, it's, it's a work in progress every single day. And to not be too hard on yourself. And I think that people who are naturally ambitious and want to achieve and create and build are very hard on themselves mm. because it's just kind of comes with the territory. Um, and I'm very, very hard on myself. I'm like, you know, I haven't done this yet and I haven't done that. Sometimes I'm like, just be really grateful for what you have done. I love that because I think part of the issue is people pull the ejection cord a bit too soon and it could literally be mile 21 yeah. at the end of the marathon and you are just, something is getting ready to take flight and you're pulling out right yeah. before it's about ready to go. Completely. Because We've got to so often live in the space of hope and faith hope that and the faith. vision is going to manifest. Hope and faith right? and and a lack of impatience. Yeah. You know, hope and faith and just knowing that actually, this is going to sound really kind of um, highfalutin, but the universe has your back, actually. That if you are conspiring to do good, you know, everything else is going to work with you for it to happen. And people will somehow kind of come out of the woodwork to make it happen. And um, it's really why The Alchemist is my favorite book. <laughs> yes, Paolo, it's so good. Love. It's one really brave moment. Uh, would love to hear that. And then also just how you practice being brave on more of a daily basis, those small acts of bravery. 
So I think one really brave thing was um, probably how I completely changed my business. And you know, I had gone through all of these, I jumped through all these hoops to become this credible fashion designer. Mm -hmm. You know, I was very young, as I said, when I started the business, didn't have a lot of experience in the industry. And I did this, the CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund, you know, we were judged by Anna Wintour and Jenna Lyons and Diane von Furstenberg and all these, you know, major titans of industry and you put yourself out there you lay yourself bare to basically be told that you know there's you've got so far to go and you know etc cetera, etc cetera, which they're right you do but um all i knew was that other people and in other industries were doing something inter interesting in this direct to consumer path mm. and i was gonna figure it out as i went along and um and I, you know honestly i just had the balls to do it mm. and I think sometimes, and it's that idea of, you know, really kind of losing everything, you're like, screw it. <laughs> like, it, it might not work, but it can't get much better than, it can't get much worse than feeling tied to a business that I don't enjoy anymore. I don't enjoy going to work. This, this isn't something that brings me joy. Um, so that was a, a brave and a bold act. Um, and acts of bravery every day are, you know, even when you get into an argument with someone or whatever, being able to say I'm sorry. The vulnerability thing is something I struggle with every day. I have a really hard time telling people that I'm not doing so well um, and being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You can even hear it now. I'm like, you know, it's, it's hard for me to be vulnerable. It's like and I to was, then ask for help. Yeah, and, and to tell someone that, you know, like, I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going and I'm exhausted. Right. Yeah, you've been traveling a lot, and then oh, some. Oh, just, it's just, you, you have mental exhaustion sometimes yeah. from being the leader, and you know, you just finish one launch, and you've got to go on to the next one. So it's like, we're launching Kashmir for the holidays, and it's like super exciting. But I'm like, okay, I'm done with that. What are we doing for, you know, Q1 of next year? And it's just constant. Yeah. It's a constant grind, and I think you have to enjoy what you're doing. Otherwise, it really feels draining. <laughs> We've talked about that before too, the notion of like, this has to be so rooted in a mission and a vision that is far beyond you yeah. too, in terms of what you want to bring and manifest in the world. Yeah. Because that's what pulls you through. And honestly, you don't always know what that is. Right. Like the mission and the vision change. They Over evolve. Time, yeah. So, you know, it starts with one thing and then, you know, you kind of get to that place and you're like, okay, we're doing that and we're known for that now. And like, okay, what's next? Because I suppose for me, I'm never happy being static. Mm. Growth is extremely important for me. And that's personal, professional, you know, financial, all of it. Knowing what you know now, was it worth it? 100%. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, there's no, I, I would never have been able to do it any other way. What do you plan on building next? I want to think about what a physical retail experience feels like for us. Like, what is it? It's not just opening a store or a pop-up. It's, you know, I want to do it differently. Um, so there's that angle. And then, you know, it's just continue to also build on my personal life and, you know, being really happy in that because I can't be all in in one thing. You know, it just doesn't bring me happiness just thinking about clothes and fashion. I don't even think of myself really as a fashion designer because what I do is so much kind of the iconic hero pieces in your wardrobe. Mm. It's not about seasonality or anything like that. It's about beautiful pieces you'll have forever. And I think, you know, what else will you have forever in your life? It's, you know, your friendships, your relationships, your, you know, your home. It's those kinds of things. Love it. Thank you. You're very welcome. What do you most value in others? Loyalty, honesty, and self-respect. What do you most value in yourself? My honesty and my empathy. What holds you back? Um, probably my lack of patience. <laughs> One thing you're afraid of? <sighs> probably quitting too soon. One thing you'd change about yourself? Um, how impatient I am. Your biggest vice? Dark chocolate. <laughs> Very easy. <laughs> what keeps you sane? My dog and my friends. Something you wish you would have kept doing? It's something that I do still do, and it's meditating. Something you wish you would have stopped sooner? Probably the wholesale aspect of my business. Something that keeps you going and building? The people around me that I see growing and, 
my sense of ambition. That's a wrap! Thank you.